All right, hi guys. Uh, this will be my second video, and I'm going to go over the uh, 373 chip. And this is in uh, this is this this is slightly different than um, the register A or, or register B chips, uh, which are using the uh, 245 and then the uh, uh, two individual chips that store the information: a low chip and a high chip. Um, <clears throat> so I've got the data sheet here for the 373. Um, an octal transparent latch, uh, and you have a 373 and a 374. The uh, 374 uh, varies in that it has a clock pulse uh, and uh, instead of a latch enable. So the clock pulse uh, naturally implies that it's going to latch on a rising or uh, lowering edge, which presents some issues. Um, the 374 does come in the uh, Jamico kit. Um, but I decided to use the 373. The reason for that is if you look at the um, data sheet, you have the latch enable here, high, high, low, and the latch enable here, they call it latch enable on this chip, but it's actually the uh, clock pulse on the rising edge. So that's when things latch in. And um, in, this, in this breadboard computer, I wasn't confident that we were controlling the timing exactly as we wanted because we have down here, we are um, doing our microcodes on the opposite end of the clock pulses than we are on the rest of the computer. So over here, you can see we have the, uh, I believe this is the inverted um, clock uh, pulse, and this is the rest of the clock pulse uh, circuitry that's controlling the rest of the computer. So <clears throat> what I wanted to do was have my microcode um, actually with the 373s um, taking and allowing the uh, 373 to stay open uh, for input and modification um, during the whole clock pulse cycle. And in our computer, those clock pulse cycles can be you know, fairly long. Um, the uh, interesting thing with the uh, 373 is, is you'll notice here you have the latch enable when it is high. Your data inputs um, will um, control what is on your outputs, okay? When your um, latch enable and output enable is low, output enable is, is low, uh, triggered low, your um, output, Q0, means that it will send out whatever you had input into it the first time. So here, let me pull this up again. So here, output enable, when the latch enable is high, that's when you're programming it, so your data that you're sending in is going to go into the latch. And when your latch enable is low, and your output enable, which is triggered low, there's a little underline right there, or overline right there, it's gonna give you back the data that you had and it's gonna leave it. So one of the important things with the um, 373 is, is that if you want the 373 to actually display information on your LED, you have to keep your output enable low. So what I typically do is um, I will take and allow that uh, to be low um, as I'm uh, running through this. In this case, the 373 works ideally when you are only placing things into the register and not expecting them to come back out onto the bus. Um, when you are, <clears throat> when you have a situation where you want them to come out back onto the bus, um, then a combination of a 245, uh, which we've used in the other registers, and a 373 would actually achieve what you're looking for without the um, uh, multiple chips for the 8 bits. The 373 and the 245 can give you the 8 bits that you're looking for and place it on the bus or bring it through depending on how you how you set it up. So the 373 um, allows you to control it um, with your microcodes, whereas the 374 depends on a rising edge pulse to actually have it happen. So what's gonna happen is with this, you, you probably will get your data in there, no problem, but the uh, uh, information will only flash on the bus or flash on the or the register here for just a moment, and that's not what we want. We want we want to actually be able to see this for an extended period of time. So the 374 ends up not being an appropriate chip for our uh, breadboard computer, which you know we want to see steady state information, not pulsed information in this per particular instance. So that's a little bit about the 373 and how I used it for the um, in this case this here is the instruction register um, and how I used it to um, bring uh, data in. So uh, one other thing I'll just show you, and I'll, I'll touch base on this again here. You can see here 
the soldered uh, pins that I have. I'm gonna pull one of these out here so you can see kind of what it looks like. So that's that's all it is, it's just a jumper. I snapped it on two and then I just plug it into the appropriate thing. What this does, like I discussed before, is it brings the power to each of the breadboards and um, doesn't uh, lose any um, any of the power due to, due to um, friction fitting and uh, resistance in those friction fits. Uh, in my case, I used breadboards that were two or three dollars a piece. Um, more expensive breadboards, I'm sure, um, would behave better. Um, ben was nice enough to write and let me know that he um, his breadboards actually didn't cause him issues there. Um, mine did, and I'm sure it's due to the quality. But I was able to get it to work. Um, something else that's interesting here, I just soldered together some uh, uh, pull to ground, pull low uh, resistors here uh, for me, 4.7k. Um, and then up here, I did my bus register so that I could show what's going on. I have some uh, inline resistor packages that I, I'm going to uh, uh, use uh, for a lot of these guys right here coming uh, my way. Just to clean them up a little bit because you're using all these individual resistors. I don't know, just something that I think will clean it up. So anyway, that's the 373 and why I used it. The data sheet here, you'll notice that the 374 has an error on it right here. This is not latch enable, it's actually clock pulse. And here's you know the 373. Essentially what the 373 does and the 374 is, is you have your typical pinouts, ground and, and VCC voltage, your latch enable and your output enable. Output enable here is triggered low. There should be a, a overline over this. <clears throat> you have your D0 uh, through D7, so 8 bits, that you can bring data in. And it's pinned um, slightly odd. Um, it always confuses me why. It just seems to me to make more sense on these chips <coughs> to do something like the 245 where all the data lines are on one side and all the output lines are on the other side. Not sure about how they design chips and all that kind of stuff and why it makes sense to do an output with a data input and input, then an output, then an output, then a uh, input and input and then an output, but that's how they did it. So uh, you take and you send your data in via the outputs, you provide a latch enable that will then set them, you remove the latch enable, you can put your output enable low, and the information you just put in will come out of your D. Uh, zero through D7 outputs. Uh, kind of a neat chip. Saves you from the um, <clears throat> dual chip register situation that you have here. Um, and I can't quite read those uh, at the moment just because for some reason a lot of chip manufacturers really don't um, put a nice silk screen or whatever on their chip. Like these 373s, I love it. I can see exactly what's going on here. This guy, that's a 245, but I can barely read it. Frustrating. Anyway, have a great one. Uh, hope this helps. And uh, please keep posting comments and subscribing. Uh, I will uh, try to answer them as best I can. And uh, as always, I'm a supporter of Ben Eater on Patreon. And I encourage you to do uh, that as well um, because his videos are absolutely fantastic and go into the hows and whys of this whole thing that, uh, you know, really will get you started.